people actually blame the people. You can you can change the code if 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 you want. That is that is a code we put in the highest number we could think of. The reality in in all of these market rate developments is the market will determine what they rent for. Mm -hmm. uh, you, whenever you, people use the word affordable or use 120,000. The way they get to that is to say, well, you spend 30%, then you have utilities, and you have 60 or 90, uh, 70% to use for other, um, other things. Uh, so it's always a little bit arbitrary what, uh, what people actually need to earn in a year to pay the rent. And it's typical in San Francisco that most people are paying far more than 30% of their income to rent a place. And I know it's 40, 50%. And if you have a mortgage, it's probably even more. So it's a, it's a problem here in San Francisco, and um, it's a way of price of success. Um, so we had, to, we had to put in a figure, we put in a high figure, just to say that this was not 80% uh, of AMI, 55% of AI, 35% of AI. We, we gave a, as honest a uh, response as we could. Sure. All right. Going back to the Seattle thing, this is this is going to be the second housing that you built like this. Correct. As well, then the question to me is, why are you building this kind of housing? Where is your track record on this in regards to this housing, and why here in San Francisco? Why okay. here in the um, San Francisco uh, is a very dense uh, area with limited opportunities for constructing anything new. The smaller lots in particular, 8,000 square feet, are essentially undevelopable with conventional means and current costs. Uh, we're trying to do something different. We're taking a risk. Developers take risk, um, and that's what we're doing. We are hoping that our partnership with Swinerton uh, and the design team that has worked on the first uh, I'll say successful building, will be able to translate it into a larger second and third building. So the simple answer is we're taking a risk. We're taking a huge risk. And, you know, the benefits to the community is instead of a surface parking lot, uh, is new units. But you haven't answered the question, why here? Why and what is your track record? You don't have a track record. Okay. So this is like a guinea pig after... It's, it's, a type of, it's a type of a guinea pig, but we have one prototype. So that's the track record, one. This will be two and three. Why here? There, there is a opportunity to develop small lots. But Med, you're not taking into consideration anything that the surrounding area is about, who the people are, the community, any of that. You don't take any of that into consideration. I don't know why you say it. It's true. It's true. Uh, well, I disagree. I mean, whenever, <laughs> let's back up, whenever anything is built in any neighborhood, anywhere in the city, anywhere in the Bay Area, you build to what you think your market is. That's, that's the private sector. Um, we think the market is lower rents. It's not $3,000 rents. There is no product built today in that rental range. So how do you do it? You do it by trying to do something different. And it in, in necessarily has to be smaller. And necessarily has to have less amenities associated with it. Then uh, we can go south of the market uh, to any of the, hot, go to NEMA. They have a staff of 50. They have porters. They have uh, storage for your uh, refrigerated goods. That's, that's five blocks away. Um, uh, you build to what you think will be successful. Um, and uh, we think this project will have a lot of residents who live in the area living there. Yeah. Sorry. Sure. Um, <clears throat> well, I, I want to applaud you for what you're saying as far as being uh, risk takers. Um, I think it's important to, to try out new things. Uh, I, and I appreciate this project because I think part of what's beautiful about this neighborhood is its diversity. Um, you know, the, the long history of people who are living here uh, at very low incomes, and then people who live in and around the neighborhood who have higher incomes. And there have been studies that have shown that people 
of mixed income communities tend to be healthier than those who are isolated. So I really um, appreciate the idea of you bringing this group housing in, and I'm wondering with the $250 million um, affordable housing bond that the mayor is proposing that we pass this year, uh, how feasible do you think it will be to get some of that housing funding so you can end up with a building that has uh, affordable housing and high income housing living in the same space, sharing the same common space, building community in that healthy uh, mix uh, income uh, environment uh, that really reflects the neighborhood. Yeah, I think unfortunately right now there are very few and TNDC and other groups, nonprofit developers are going through it too. There are very few public subsidies available. Uh, the bond issue might pass, it might not pass. Uh, we see every day that it's growing or it's shrinking or it's got other strings attached to it. Um, the, the very simple answer is these lots could have been developed for the last 70 years by any public agency. Just had to buy it and build it. And um, it hasn't happened. Um, and I think the, the discrepancy between what is affordable and what something new costs is, is huge. And to make up that subsidy uh, is a big problem. And if these funds can do it, and they can do it in, uh, I understand the project's already lined up for those funds, whether it's in Mission Bay or South of Market or other neighborhoods or the Mission District, um, um, it's, it's great, but there are no funds available for this site right now. So, so you're saying that the feasibility of, of bringing those funds into this site? If those funds came in, they'd be welcomed. Okay, so we and can work with you to try to make that a part of this sure. project and put in affordable housing in this project? Sure. I mean, uh, it's it's a question of the gap between what it costs right. and, and what uh, uh, the market rents are or the below market rents are. Okay, great. Well, we've got some place we can work together. Sure. Go ahead. Yeah, it sounds to me that um, in your case, it should be not called affordable housing, but a workforce housing only, because the majority of people who be wanting to live will not be able to afford to live in that place, though they live in the community. Um, <clears throat> and though they might have social security money, whatever, they will not be able to afford nothing there. So it seems to me much more appropriate to the word uh, group housing, as, as opposed to the word uh, affordable. Yeah. But there's no such thing in, in, in San Francisco nowadays as affordable, at least for poor people. Is it affordable for ball, guys who like to put on TV at the baseball game or basketball tickets, seasonal? It's, it's affordable to those kind of guys or people who have own big businesses and whatever. It's affordable to them. So that's what you have to for them. But for the, for the smaller person, there's no affordability, period. And the question, the question of why you want to build here, uh, that was a geological question. Because after all, you, you have a community here is uh, homeless people or not. You have uh, people that hang out a lot. Uh, people who can't find jobs a lot. Yet you say workforce. People who can't find jobs a lot. Um, people in the neighborhood would not get hired by anybody in the, in the work field, mostly. We get to call it uh, workforce housing. I uh, have a problem with that idea because, well, as you know, the unemployment is very high as it is, and no one is being hired, at least down here. <laughs> Some people might be sitting for the crack and getting hired, but the majority of people just still have those jobs. So uh, it would be nice if you came with an idea to build this real affordable housing so people who were otherwise out on the street can actually have a home. Uh, that would be nice. That's, that didn't even say you had affordable housing. Well, I, I think you make good points. It shouldn't be called affordable housing. I, I didn't say I that. Know. Uh, workforce is better, but um, you're talking about city-wide and regional-wide problems, and uh, they can't be solved by one project or, or by us. Uh, there are no government subsidies at all anywhere in this project. In fact, the fees that are paid are, are substantial. Um, I would look to uh, decision makers to how those fees are spent. The planning fees right now, the planning department has a surplus. You know, the building department has a surplus. I mean, nobody's screaming at them. <laughs> yeah, sorry. So, 
It's all market rate housing. It's all market rate, and how many units are there? 238. Uh, and so what's the, uh, what's the argument you're presenting to, to the community as being like, beneficial? What's the benefit of putting that there? The, the benefit to the uh, community is that we can do the project. I mean, the, the sure. tough thing about affordable, I mean, we're in this huge debate about affordable housing. The tough thing is that, and people complain about the very poor and the very rich being, in, you know, housing only for the very rich. The only way you can build a project today with the subsidi subsidies for in lieu housing or uh, uh, housing within the unit uh, within the project is to have to get very high rents or very high condo prices on the top end. So there's there's a very narrow debate now about what affordable housing is, and part of the bond measure is set aside for middle income housing. The middle income folks have had no subsidies at all. What's the middle income defined? Uh, San Francisco, probably TNDC can help me out better, but 80000 for a family of four, something like that? It's like 72, 72. 72 for one person is the median income. Okay, but for a family of four, it's higher than that. The average income in the Tenderloin, uh, I think it's like the last census was um, $22,030, $23,000. Is the average income, uh, you know, So I mean, I mean, when, when we start talking about affordable housing, I think it should be, I mean, it should be local, community by community, right? Because if you don't like, you look at like, you know, the average income and the typical line compared to the average income and like the mission, and then we start putting up these housing facilities, we start saying these are affordable, and then we have this threshold. Whereas in the neighborhood, maybe in the mission, you would have like a, a lot of people that are being evicted or being displaced would fall into this category. But you know, with that threshold here, you know, all the people that I work with on the streets, I work with everybody that, that, that are on the house in this neighborhood. I don't see them ever being able to like have a dream, the American dream of okay, I'm going to get cleaned up and I'm going to get a job, and this job <coughs> is going to be a very low-paying job is going to sustain me enough because they do want to work. Um, sustain me enough to number one feed me, but then also properly house me in the neighborhood that I've been in, is, and, and for many of them, ten to twenty years. I, I, I'm leaving. not. I'm not disagreeing with you. Yeah, they're leaving. What I will say about the affordable housing project citywide is you cannot discriminate by neighborhood, and in fact, you can't yeah. even discriminate by who gets that house, right? Mm -hmm. So every time they want teachers or firemen to get a, a, a below market rate condo, can't do it. So the program as it exists is pretty complicated. Uh, I haven't gone over here, sorry. Yes, uh, I live on the west side of the uh, uh, 351 Turk, so I, my understanding is uh, you will be building three feet from my window and block out all access to the view of the sky from up to the ninth floor. Let's talk afterwards and take a look at your window. I don't think that's true. I don't, I don't Why know not address it here? Because if he's not, not the only one that has this concern. There are a number of people that live in that building that have that concern. So why not address it now? I would love to meet with every one of them. But to go window by window in this group is probably not appropriate. Uh, we need to know what level. When we look at it, there are a number of bathroom windows <coughs> that are three to four feet away. We don't see any um, uh, 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 bedroom windows, for instance. Uh, the Oasis Hotel is what, 23 stories, 25 stories, or eight. It's so 12 stories, 12 floors. The, o the Oasis Apartments. Uh, we, I'll check that. I'll check that. Tom lives there. And I, and I have a studio, and I have one window that looks out to the west. Right, well, let's look at your particular unit. We have a, uh, in the, in the uh, packet, there's a floor plan of the Oasis Hotel against our building, and that's the only way to really check each and every condition. Good. How close will you be building to the property line? Anywhere from 12 feet to 3 feet, and in some cases, zero. On, on the Turk side, we have a zero. And uh, if you look at any of these buildings, they're all zero. He's got the plans there. You can show them right now. I, I'd be happy to. His particular unit yeah. is, your plan is 8 feet away. Eight feet away. Yeah, from this. Okay, so not two or three. I said, you know. Uh, I was told three feet. Well, 
And that's why we need to get down and look at the plans and look at it specifically. Happy to, happy to everybody from the Oasis who wants to stay later, we can go through this. Sure. Yeah. Um, my understanding is there's legislation being written at the Board of Supervisors to require BMR in this group housing. If that passes, would you abandon the project or could you afford to put it in? Probably could not afford to put it in. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I mean, that's a conundrum. Yeah. It's I tough really, to build today. I really don't, you can't, you've said a couple times you're taking a risk. What is your risk? I don't, I don't hear from what you're presenting. It's going to cost you a lot less, 40% less, fewer employees, this modular thing. People who live there may be taking a risk if there's an earthquake, if it all collapses, and this is the first one in the city. But we know there's people going to move in there. They're going to be tech workers who like this kind of housing while they're young and all before they get married, and students. A lot, a lot of the, school, the schools here are buying, are taking out long-term leases. I can give one example at Ninth and Mission, where there's another one of these, uh, not similar to yours as far as the modular, but they're very small units. The Conservatory of Music has leased for a long term, I don't know how many floors, the upper floors for their students. So I would not be surprised that this, your place will be full as soon as it's built. But not with the people that live in the Tenderloin. They cannot <coughs> afford this. People who live in the Tenderloin, many live in SRO hotels, which this is very similar to, and they would, some of them would love to get out of their SRO hotel to a nicer SRO hotel, which your project is very similar to. But they cannot afford the, the amount you're saying, and I'm sure by the time it's built, it'll be closer to 2,000 than to 1,300. Yeah. Okay, that's all I have to say. Well, you know, there's a role for the nonprofit developers to build that housing that um, um, and, and use the, all the public subsidies and the tax credits that they can uh, avail themselves of to uh, build those units. I mean, there's a role for the private sector. There's a role for the nonprofit sector. Housing is the most expensive commodity by far anywhere, and it's not a problem that is solvable today with what, I mean, you can't say to a a private guy, what's our risk? Uh, we've already spent quite a bit of money to get to this point, to design it, to go through the wind tunnel studies, to go to the shadow studies, to do the archaeological dig, to do the toxic uh, exploration, to pay the city its fees, to redesign uh, the project three or four or five times, to uh, work with the attorneys, with the adjoining neighbors and so forth. What's our risk? All of that could go away. All of it. And then we get into construction, uh, we have uh, construction delays, we have construction costs that are always possible, and then you hope, the developer hopes, that he can make a profit at the end of the day. And that is a huge, there is probably no riskier business than what we're trying to do, or what any private developer is trying to do. Okay, can we have Sam, I mean, people that have not asked the question, because I see everybody that's already asked a question. So, one, I want to say, um, I'm hearing you make a commitment that if, um, Mark masses or the anti-displacement coalition or some community group, TNDC, can help you and the city get together and find subsidies for this that you're willing to, to move in that direction. Is, is that right? Sure. I mean, if, if the gap can be made up sure. in some way. So the question I have for you is who's going to Section manage... Section 8 used to be a great program. Yeah, absolutely. So who's going to manage the building once it's done? Is there going to be a new management company that comes in, or are you going to sublease to somebody else? How's no, that we're talking going? to a couple uh, national management companies with lots of experience. This will be a, a, an intensive management um, uh, development because there's a lot of density in it and a lot of traffic, so it will require more management. Um, what I didn't focus on, and probably should have, is that uh, the building itself will have its own gray water recycling program. It will be far in excess of Title 24. There is no drywall in the building made up of cementitious boards and insulation in the panels. Uh, so the chance for mold and so forth is, is non-existent. Um, the, uh, if you put a lead standard on it, it would be far in excess of platinum. Platinum isn't even in the category that this one will go to. Uh, you know, the solar panels on the, on the roof will help uh, in terms of the energy. The units are all low voltage, 
We're not using regular 110 voltage. You'll have an outlet for 110.